Good morning, everybody. It's Ben Jones uh, from Bad Dwarf and Bronson Coffee Roasters hanging out here in my workshop. It's the 26th day of March. Um, that's cool. I like it. We're going to try something fun and new today. Uh, a little experimentation on our Friday. Let's turn that light down a little bit. There we go. Um, <clears throat> we're going to play with a Chemex filter. If you've been following our videos, uh, all summer you probably I hope and I imagine will remember that we did a, the floating Chemex filter where I suspended the filter from some fishing line um, and brewed without the Chemex it was cool but the problem with that was that everything's kind of collapsed and once you added the water uh, the weight of that water just pulled everything down and it deformed the, uh, the, the filter um, so I was like well I need to get a ring around it and then I pulled out my brew stand for a video the other day where, where I had a little rant about using scales alongside with brew stands. And I was like, oh wait, there's a ring. I need a ring. Let's try that Chemex filter. So, fair warning, um, you will be joining me on this journey that I have not attempted yet. So we're going to learn together and truly experiment. So put that in there and I'm, just, I'm hoping that this ring will just kind of give us enough structure that I can brew into it. Um, I do want to fold the filter down and then use some of these clips to secure that to the ring. But as you can see, that filter is rather tall on there. So I think I want to take off a little bit of that extra paper. So kind of give a little mark there. Take my favorite pair of scissors and give us a generous little cut. All right. So that really shrinks down what we have to work with, but that's okay. We're, you know, we're going to play an experiment. Take our clips and I'm just going to secure that one. Secure that two. And let's secure this over on the thin side for three. Nice. So far, so good. So I have my brew stand. I have the thick portion over here against uh, where the stem is. Hopefully that'll support itself well enough. Um, the thin side over here, because I can try to rotate those a little bit. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. This is a little more support. All right, so make sure y'all can see that okay. I've just clipped it up. Let's see what happens. Let's keep, oh, let's make sure that cone, there we are. Cone's a little, a little deformed, just so if I can get that to just loosen and tighten, loosen, loosen, all right. Reset it so we have our cone. All right. Chemex filters, we always want to give them a rinse. They tend to do better. And there we go, you can smell the aroma coming off of there is very much of paper. And proof of concept so far is working. And my aim is solid. We're going to not make too big of a mess. This is also a good example of one of the moments when a scale would not make a lot of sense. Again, I would have to put my whole brew stand on top of a scale. This is a very heavy arrangement and I don't want to damage the load cell on my scale. So I'm not going to weigh any water. I'm just going to eyeball it and ballpark it because that's okay to do too. Normally, I would be running about 40 grams of uh, coarsely ground coffee for the Chemex, but because I cut off all of our paper, and we have a very short brew bit. It's, you know, similar to now a Kalita Wave. Um, a little bit shorter than a V60. This has now become a one cup brewer. So I have 19 grams of coffee. And that there nearly fills up the entirety of the 
of the filter. So I don't have a whole lot of room to work with that, but I have enough. I also went ahead and I was thinking with the Chemex grind, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to adjust, make any adjustments to the grind size. Um, without the glass against the wall here from the Chemex, this is gonna be a little bit faster because we have a lot more air exchange, uh, allowing the water to flow more freely. However, we've also got half the amount of coffee for the water to pass through. Less coffee to pass through means it's gonna pass through more quickly. So I wasn't certain if an adjustment of grind would be appropriate. So I went ahead and just clicked it up like one or two clicks above what I might do for a traditional Chemex. So we're almost in the French press range here. And then just for good measure, I'm going to put a divot in the middle to make a little crater to pour into. Timer. Kettle. And we're going to do a bloom. The bloom is just enough water to saturate the grounds, hoping for minimal drip through. We'll get a little bit because it's going to happen, but just enough to get everything nice and wet. It's going to prime the grounds to start extracting flavor. A bloom typically takes about 30 seconds. They can be faster, they can be a little bit longer. What you're looking for is once that drip starts to slow or stop and or the coffee on top, if that crest is no longer blooming or expanding, it's a good time to stop. I mean, so it's a good time to start pouring. So here I am just going to keep my level. Make sure y'all can see that, there we are. I'm just gonna pour it, I just wanna try to keep my level rel relatively low. I don't want to, I don't wanna raise it up to contact those uh, binder clips. Not that there's anything wrong with water touching binder clips, it's just, it seems to me that, well, if I, if I don't have to clean them again, I'd be okay with that. And the more water we put in here, the more weight we'll be pushing the water through. And this is going fairly fast, so we don't want too much water coming across this. And this is working a million times better than the fishing line uh, non-ringed brew. Something that um, would also work if you wanted to suspend. If you have a metal cone, one of the stainless steel cones, um, you could suspend that from some clips and that would work too. It'd be very similar to what we're doing here, but you know, of course being stainless steel, it has its own, its own structure. This is nice, this has just a real nice flow. I imagine the profile is gonna be very similar to the Chemex. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a lot more water in here because this is going a little slower than I wanted. I'm just have to clean up those binder clips again. All right. That's probably enough water up top to finish filling the mug. Since I didn't measure any of my hot water, I'm not really certain, but in case I have secondary decanter, we're just gonna let that flow in. So I'm not sure, I mean, raise your hand if you have a stand like this hanging out at home. Um, I suppose if you just took some stout wire and made a ring, um, you could suspend it from binder clips and fishing string. Really, we just need some type of form to hold the top there um, to let that brew through. So if you're in a needle point, you could feed a, a Chemex filter through your uh, 
needlepoint hoop and use that as a ring. That would work perfectly well. I could even suspend that, you know, between a stack of books or something, just along the edges. There's lots of ways to do this. I undershot a little bit, so I'm watching the, the bed now come down and it's starting to dry out. So I'm going to give a little more. And I'm feeling pretty happy about this. We're looking right at four and a half minutes. Um, and with coffee ground uh, to this coarseness, I would expect a four and a half to five minute brew time um, or con water contact time to get some flavor out without over extracting. So this could be a very nice cup of coffee. What coffee am I brewing? It's a great question, I'm glad you asked it. Uh, this is, I have a little bit of the Puddles Pity Party blend left. So I'm giving that a little run. And uh, Joshua and I, we had the uh, we had the honor and the pleasure yesterday of taking over the Puddles Pity Party Instagram uh, feed. So if you're a fan of Batter of Coffee and or Puddles Pity Party, I definitely recommend checking out his Instagram feed um, where Josh and I did a little tutorial on uh, some, some coffee brewing. So here we are. We hit this perfect. Maybe a little bit long, five and a half minutes altogether. We might be pushing a little bit into that um, burnt matchy, high carbon kind of thing. Um, Josh was asking, thank you for joining us. He asked us, what? Like, what's going on? You'll have to go back and watch from the beginning, my friend. Um, I'm not going to repeat myself for those who came to class late. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this this could be, this should be pretty cool. Um, without having tasting it yet, I think if I did this again, I would... I think we made the right choice to bump up the coarseness of our coffee a little bit because if we were hitting five and a half minutes going a little more coarse than Chemex, I want to bring that brew time down a tiny bit so a little bit bigger chunks of the water pass through through uh, more quickly. And yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, Josh wants to join the video. Let me see here. Uh, let's let you. Um, yeah, so I think I think for round two, I'll try this again. Hey, Josh, how are you? Great, that is great news. Ben, I wanted to join you today because I'm always fascinated by um, your uh, your ad hocs that you do. I just I love it because it, it it allows people to really understand the fundamentals. So I just I wanted to pop in and say that that's I love the videos when you do them. <laughs> it's really cool. Well, thank you. They're fun. This was this was a fun one and. Um, Review after tasting this coffee, yeah, it is, it is a little bit on the over-extracted side. I ever so slightly pushed it into the five and a half minute territory. So I think if I went with a little bit bigger grind size, that lets the water pass through faster. Also that bigger grind size will accommodate a longer brew time. So if I go a touch more coarse, we'll probably hit five minutes to 515. And then we hit that from two ways, mm -hmm. reduced extraction, um, from grind size and from contact time. So a little, right. a little sharp, a little astringent, but only slightly. What if is your um, temperature? Because I went with the Puddles coffee, I used a kettle at 202, knowing that it would sit for about five minutes um, in my 60 degree shot. So touch below 200. Awesome. Well, also, thermal mass on this thing, there is no thermal mass. There's no insulation. Yeah. This is exposed to ambient temperatures. And I'll tell you, this mug is perfect drinking temperature. Okay, that's good to know. So the, the coffee was still, wasn't such a loss of um, uh, thermals that you weren't able to extract properly. But it definitely gave you a cup of coffee that you can drink immediately, right? Exactly. Nice. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, yeah, I so. saw your kettle too. I also want to show you. I received a, a sample kettle from uh, from our friends at um, Ben Knudsen, and this is an OXO 
pour-over kettle, which is variable temp. And the cool thing about this one is this dial here allows you to um, change temperatures across uh, different needs. And that's why I had just done our French um, sachet and I had it at a pretty low temperature. I put it at just over, just at 199. But maybe I should bump, maybe I should bump the temperature up a little bit. Good, yeah. The, the thing with water temperature, um, water temperature is, you, you need that for extraction. Um, what I've found is that as long as you're within the range, kind of that 195 to 205 range, um, you're going to pull out flavor. But the question is, what flavors are you getting? Generally, very loose rule here, the cooler your water, the less acidity you're going to pull out. So if you want to make it a little more mild, a little, this little, little bit less zippy, you can use some cooler water. That also works really well for uh, darker roasted blends or darker roasted coffees, Frenchies and Italians. Um, because if you use it too hot, you're going to pull out too many of the astringent bits at the very beginning, uh, because dark roast is, is a little more um, sensitive to that. So water temperature, not so much how much pulls out, as in what comes right. out most aggressively. Um, what's what's so. represented, right? Got it. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. Well, thanks for letting me hijack in for a minute there. I just I <laughs> love your videos on Mondays and Fridays, and often I'm watching and listening. And then today I just had the opportunity. I just brewed coffee myself. And so I just wanted to say hi awesome. and wish you a, a good weekend. And I'm going to go pop over to uh, the Puddles Instagram and check out that video. That's great. Fantastic. Well, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining, Josh. Good to see you, Ben. Everyone else, thanks for hanging out. I'm going to go and enjoy this cup of coffee. Hmm. And then uh, I'm going to go have a weekend. Um, Nice. Make sure we don't have any other comments that I want to catch up on. Excellent. So happy Friday. Uh, I'll see you back on Monday. Um, maybe I'll play with some water temperature things. You know, water temperature doesn't convey really well over the video, <clears throat> but it could be something fun. Uh, we can at least talk a little bit about what's going on. So with that, have a great weekend. Uh, Batdorfcoffee.com for all your coffee needs. Uh, shameless plug wouldn't be right if we didn't. And uh, I'll see you on